This is the arrogance of billionaires. Hey, I can run for president because I'm worth $55 billion. And maybe I'll take $1 billion out of that $55 billion, not a lot. When you're worth that much, I don't believe that Mr. Bloomberg is going to succeed. Because I think at the end of the day, people of this country do not want to see a billionaire buy an election. 2020 Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg just filing to get on the ballot in Arizona after his opponent Bernie Sanders accused him of trying to buy the election. But should wealth really be a disqualifying factor in an election? To former CKE restaurant CEO Andy Puzzer. Andy, I, it's, I mean, listen, the Democrats were running on an anti-wealth, anti-corporation, anti-profit uh, platform anyway. So without a doubt, uh, Michael Bloomberg is disrupting that. Well, he is, but look, you've got Warren and Sanders combined have got about 40 percent of the vote, according to the Real Clear Politics average. So you've you've got you've got this you know this this activist element of the Democratic Party that is that expressing this righteous indignation against the billionaire class. And you have to ask yourself: Is a 77-year-old Jewish billionaire from New York really going to activate the, 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 to, to this uh, this element of the party that's so opposed, that supports Sanders and Warren, and is so opposed to people being wealthy? I, I think he's got real problems. Uh, I, I I don't see him getting very far in this process, but I'm glad he's in it, and I wish him well. You know, it's interesting. I was just looking at a Gallup poll last night, and again, you know, when it comes to younger Americans, the notion and, and, and the romanticism of socialism continues to climb. Uh, and I will say this, to their credit, they're, they're, they were pumping it into our high schools. Now they're even pumping it into junior high schools with some of these clubs and these communist socialist clubs, and, and they're all around the country. Andy, I, you know, I, I know maybe as we get older and we start to get a job and we find out that FICO is taking part of our check, we have an epiphany. But at this moment, it feels like this is a real threat to American capitalism. Well, it is a real threat to American capitalism. And you're right, as Winston Churchill said, if you're not a liberal when you're young, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative when you're old, you have no brain. And that's so, so the generate these numbers may change over time, but it is a real threat. And we've kind of lost the war on education. I think that's one reason you see minority communities so upset now about the level of education, about Democrats coming out against charter schools. We need to get people, we need to get people in the communities back involved in the education system so they can't co opt and brainwash our kids. We've got these teachers unions, these far leftist teachers, progressive right. controlling the, the uh, education system, and it's a disaster. How about the Democrats, instead of going at it, socialism versus capitalism, go at it, uh, government will take care of you or you can, will help you take care of yourself? Because that, to me, seems like the fight here. Even when you bring up education and, and, and for instance, in the black community, if you go from all of these cities, Andy, the, the test that they give black kids in kindergarten and first grade and second grade is so watered down, it's an, it's an insult to their intelligence. And then by the time they go to high school, they try to remove an Asian kid who, got, who aced the test and put in the black kid who never got the right curriculum in the first place. Same thing happens in colleges. Well, the whole system is, 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 uh, is aligned in the wrong direction. We really should be educating kids. We've got to teach kids American history, not anti-American history. Look, this is, you've seen, as you know, Charles, we're seeing a big swing in the polling where, where African-American communities, black communities, are now swinging towards voting for President Trump because he's shown them, look, I'll, I'll create opportunities. I'll create job opportunities. You'll see your wages go up. This is the kind of thing that capitalism can do for all communities, not just the rich, but also minority communities. And I, I think that message is starting to get through. Our education system is a big block to it, though. We have a real problem uh, with the way our children are being educated. Before I let you go, um, things like climate change, are, are, are they a game changer just yet when it comes to national elections? We know that's one of Bloomberg's uh, pet peeves. He's pumping a lot of money into it. It was supposed to change Australia, which apparently, which is supposed to be the worst place on the planet for climate change, the damage to the Great Barrier Reef. And when folks went to vote, when they stepped inside the voting, the voting booth, they stayed with the conservative government. They shocked the world because everyone thought that would be the first place where you had a real climate change election. Well, I'll tell you, if, we, if the election were determined in California, New York, and with media personalities, I think climate change would be a big deal. For the rest of America, it's not as big a deal. I think they're not buying into the panic. That's not to say there aren't, there aren't, there aren't things, you know, we shouldn't right. be pouring things into the atmosphere that, that uh, in any abundance. 
um, that are harmful to the atmosphere. But I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's going to sway the election. I think people are going to vote their pocketbooks, and in this election, that says good things for President Trump, and maybe explains why the people on the left, people in the Democratic Party, are scramble are scrambling the way they are. Andy, it's always great talking to you. Thank you very much.